can. That's a dramatic pause. All right. Psalm chapter 119. Been looking forward to getting back into this chapter and, and uh, preaching and teaching it. And looking forward to the, the, the message tonight. Let's go ahead and read the verses 25 to 32. And then we'll have a song and preach you just for a little bit. Not going to uh, try to keep you here very long tonight. Uh, but I do want to get what God has given us. And I, I know that he wants to work. Uh, let me encourage you to read Psalm 119 often, especially since we're going every Thursday night through it and, and doing some study of your own, maybe looking up some of the words, maybe uh, looking into some of the history and uh, things that were going on and, 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 and what, we, what maybe God with the Holy Spirit would help you to understand and maybe speak to your heart. I mean, it's really, really good. And, and I love the Bible, and I am thankful that I can get back into it and really devote some time to it and let the Lord work through it and then he does and he is and I thank God for that uh, and then he uh, he does a lot verse 25 the Bible says my soul cleaveth unto the dust quicken thou me according to thy word I have declared my ways and thou heardest me teach me thy statutes make me to understand the way of thy precepts so shall I talk of thy wondrous works my soul melteth for heaviness Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Let's pray, we'll have a song, and we'll preach you just for a little bit tonight. Father, we love you so much. And God, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for what these next eight verses mean to me and how they have spoke to my heart. And I'm thankful to be able to study the word of God so that I can uh, preach it to uh, the, the folks that you have put in my life and that I uh, get to pastor. And, and I, I'm thankful for that, Lord, the dividing of the word of God, rightly dividing of the word of God, that we might be able to preach it. And you've given us a preacher, a pastor, for that reason, that when we come to the house of God, he would have something uh, from the word of God that would be able to speak to us. And so, Lord, I'm trusting you that you would do that tonight. I pray that you would use me, empty me of myself, and fill me with your spirit, and change our lives tonight in here. Help every person, Lord, especially the person uh, that is going through it. Uh, whatever the growing through it would mean to them, Lord, many, many things that uh, could be on the heart of your people tonight. And, Lord, we all need something from the word of God. Please help us in a mighty way. Have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Bring it all in here, so I'll just bring it all in here. 
you know that, that um, God, God looks to deal with us and to help us and to, uh, to share with us our problems, uh, to help us through tough circumstances, and not only things that we have no, uh, that, that we have, that have come upon us, but things that we have created also, uh, problems and things God wants to get back, God's a, God's a dear father that loves his children. And listen, you think you love your child more than anybody could love a child. Well, God gave you that because that's the way he feels about us. And so he loves when his children come back. He loves to help his children when they're in need. And he allows everything to come our way. He's not, he's not let anything pass that hasn't uh, passed by his desk first. And so thank God we can bring it all to him. Let's look at Psalm chapter 19, look at verse number 1. The uh, Bible says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. You know, we, we've got to think about this psalm and the man that is writing it. And, and he is pretty, pretty fired up about how good God is. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart, man. If you seek God, you'll be a happy man. You'll be, you'll be have, well, you do, but you got to do it with your whole heart. That's what God desires. They also do no iniquity. That doesn't mean they don't sin. That means they don't have the sin of iniquity. Their, their thoughts and their, their intents and they want to serve the Lord. They're still sinners, but they don't have iniquity, it says. They walk in his ways. Uh, that thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Uh, oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. So then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Just think about these words and I hope that they're your words. Lord, I want you. I will not uh, falter and, and stay down if I falter. That, that's what appears that's what he's saying, that it's just, just going to stick with the Lord. Wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. I mean, he loves his word. He loves God. He wants God, and he desires God. To just serve the Lord. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I, I'm hiding your word in my heart. Not just memorizing like uh, Brother Thryn said. I am hiding it. It is in there and I'm putting it in there. And it's there so I don't sin against you. A person that has a sin problem has a, has a, a Bible problem. Uh, and when I say a sin problem, I'm talking about a, a just a, a, a over and over and over and a not care. It is because either the word is not in their heart, they're not saved, or they're just not interested in the word. Uh, blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments of thy mouth. I mean, everything, Lord, I've done it with my lips. I've rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself on thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Deal with me, or deal bountifully. I love this part of the book. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things 
out of thy law. That's what we need when we read our Bible. We, we need to read our Bible. We need to get prayed up. And we need to sit down and we need to get our game face on and say, God, open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things. And boy, I tell you, there's no way that God is going to turn that down and not give you something. He wants to. I am a stranger in the earth. God, I, this is just, I'm just passing through here, Lord. I need your word. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the, longing, for the longing that it hath under thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Remove from me the reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and break against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. And thy testimonies are also uh, are my delight and my counselors. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. You understand what that means? The word of God was his delight. What God said was what he delighted in, and that's what counseled him. See, listen to me. Write it down. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. That is, that is correct. If you are going to live your life without the counsels of the word of God, write it down. You will fall. Now, you say, well, does that mean I ain't going to have any money? No, no, that's not what that means at all, man. There are a lot of people falling that have money. But they have no peace. And they have no God. And they have no life. And, and their life is meaningless to them. And thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. And then we get to verse number 25, and, you know, I've not done enough research on Psalm 119 to, to completely understand the stanzas, the eight, eight verses and, and everything. I know it's the Hebrew alphabet and different things like that, but I'm, I'm not sure about the time frames. of if he, I don't believe he probably just sat down and wrote 174 verses in one day and just not, I mean, he could have under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We know that he could do that. But when we get to verse 25, it almost seems like something happened. Something has, has come up. And he says, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. And he begins to say, I have declared my ways and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Hey, if his soul's cleaving to the dust, that means he's way down right now. I mean, he's, he has fallen prostrate somehow. For some reason, he is under something very bad. And then it says his, his soul melteth for heaviness. We will get the implication that he's weeping. And he's crying. And it's, it's heavy. And he says, strengthen thou me according to thy word. Lord, I need your word. Because your word says that I can be strengthened by and I need to be strengthened by. He says, remove from me the way of lying. And grant me thy law graciously. So what does that mean? Remove from me the way of lying. I believe 100% that he's a sinner. And he has somehow fallen into uh, a possibility of being a liar. Telling lies. So it maybe it just means remove all the people that are lying around him. I don't think that's what that is because I don't think he's heavy. Just be, I think he's having problems here. I have chosen the way of the truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of the commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. I want to preach to you tonight, and I want you to see something that I believe these eight verses are kind of a progression of, of, of what's going on in his life. And the last three verses are a victory. But the first five, there's something going on. And, and, and whether it be, we don't know the problem that he had, and we, we, we can, we can kind of guess a little bit, and that's what I may do a little bit here tonight. I'm not sure. Some great sorrow has overtaken him. He's overwhelmed with grief. It's a time when, when he's praying, and he's, 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 he's asking God to help him. Uh, the first 
uh, this is the first of nine prayers in this chapter where he says, quicken his life. Make my life alive again. That's what that means, quicken with me. Make my life alive again. Help me to come back to life. And the psalmist finds some hope and goodness in, in his hand when, he's, when he has God in his testimonies. And, and he thinks about the fact that God is still on the throne, that God is still in charge, and he can still come to God. Now, I want you to think about that tonight. He, he has every answer he needs in the Lord, not in the news not in our friends that are backslid, not in other people that want to do the wrong thing and you go to, but in the Word of God, we have all the answers. And we see him applying the Word in this. And I want you to look at it with me, and we'll just go through it kind of quick, but we'll, 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 we'll stop where we need to. I want you to look at verse number one. He says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Make me alive. Quicken thou me. According to thy word. Now, I'm not sure he's referencing some part of the scripture, but I think he's saying, Lord, you can just say it. You can pick me back up and you can pull me together right now because you're God. Lord, my soul cleaveth to the dust. I mean, that means he is down in the dirt. Everything in him was down. He was depressed, and I'm not sure if it was his fault. It could have been. I, I, I kind of, in my heart and, and with, my, with the Holy Spirit, I kind of believe it was his fault. And he, you see, because we're all sinners at best. We might think the guy that wrote Psalm 119, man, what a guy. Well, he was still a sinner. We might think Jeremiah was the greatest and weeping prophet and just stuck with the Lord. Well, he was still a sinner. We might think Joseph uh, and David and, and all these, they were still sinners. There are some people in the Bible who have no recorded sin. But listen, this guy was just a person. And he was fired up about the Lord and God was doing something in his life, but now he's depressed and we don't really know why. And it could be that he's under conviction. It could have been from some kind of sin. Or some kind of guilt. And, and, and I'm not, I, God's going to preach the message tonight. But I want you to understand, whether the circumstances are your fault or not, and I believe that they were his fault here. I believe he was lying. I believe he got caught up. God still will get involved if you'll ask him. He had to come down to the end of himself and say, God, I need you. It could have been, you know, someone else's fault. Where did he turn? He turned to the Lord. Hey, tonight I want to ask you, you know, where are we going to turn when times get tough? We've got to turn to him. We've got to trust in him. We've got to let him be God. He has a plan. And I've learned that really hard way the last month or so. And I thank God. I'm not here to say I say super spiritual, but I never lost track of God, and I loved him, and he, I knew he was in control, and he could take care of everything. And, and just like the day I chose the Lord, I knew he was God, and I was going to trust in him to take care of everything. I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ when I, when I turned to him. And it's what we need. He come to the end of himself. Lord, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. You know, people, he, he's depressed. And, and, and listen to me, I hear it all the time from parents, from people with their family members, uh, with, with, with uh, loved ones, sending their people to psychiatrists getting them help from the state and, and, and allowing them to be put under that, uh, the subjection of some stranger who doesn't care about them. I mean, they might grow to care about them. I'm not saying they're all crazy people, but the world would say, man, you get that low, you better get some psychiatric help. And people are doing it all the time. And I tell them all the time, I may not be able to do everything you need, but you can come to me 
and we'll figure it out, and I'll call somebody and get help. And the world says go to the psychiatrist. Or the world, uh, the psychiatrist put our kids on drugs to keep them from being a little bit excited. Listen, if your kid is not excited, uh, just understand, if you, have a, if, you, uh, if you have a kid, teenager or not, if they don't get a little bit excited somewhere, there might be a problem. If they're not a little bit high strung every now and then as children, and, and, and so that's not what I'm preaching at tonight, but I am telling you that a psychiatrist can't help anybody. He goes to God. And the solution was God. God, quicken thou me. Make me alive, Lord. My problems are hard. It's bad. It's tough. When I saw this verse, without reading the rest, I thought, man, that's, that's where I'm at right now with my dad. Lord, I'm in dumps, man. I need you to do something. And I've been... I, I waited patiently on the Lord to do something. He might have been doing something. I wasn't knowing it, but I'm telling you. But I think the guy's in trouble. And he says, Lord, I've been in the dust, and I need you to help me. Hey, tonight, I mean, are you in a good spot with the Lord right now? Or is your life adding up to what God wants it to add up to right now. Your thoughts, what you do, how you live, what you see, what you talk about, what, what goes on in the mind of you during the day. I mean, think about that now. That's important for those things to be in subjection to the Lord. And if it's not, if he's not your strong tower that Jada talks about, and you're finding comfort and looking for comfort in relationships or, 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 or your kids or your job or in medication or in doctors or in lawyers or, or whatever it might be. Listen, you better ask God to quicken thou you. God, I need you to do something. And so, so number one, you know, I just, I just put God's word will put life back in him. We'll put life back in us, but we've we really gotta we gotta we gotta confess to him. Says, Lord, I'm down in the dust, Lord, and I need you. Does God know where he's at? Yes, he does. Quicken me. He just said in verse 24, thy testimonies are also my delight and my counselors. He was seeking the counselor. God's called the counselor in the word of God. Hey, there are very few problems. Listen, there are very, very few problems in life that cannot be solved by God. You say, well, you, is there any problem that can't be solved by God? Well, I, I'm, I'm just kind of saying, I, I was thinking today about that statement in my mind, thinking everything really can be solved by God, but there are some things that you don't really have to have God to fix. And I'm not talking bad about God. I'm just saying there are some things you can do yourself. But most problems, you're going to have to rely upon the Lord. And, and, and so tonight, God wants to put life back in you. Number two, in verse 26, I've declared my ways, and thou hurtest me. Teach me thy statutes. Well, now he's telling he declares his ways. So if he's really hurting, what do you mean? Well, I think that he went to God and confessed it. And now he's starting to be picked back up, backed up a little, back up a little bit. You know, I, I, I was in the dust and I was hurting, and, and and he had to confide in God. He had to trust in God. That's number two. The word of God will help you to confide in Him. Uh, I have declared my ways, and Thou heardest me. Listen, you've got to go to the Lord. If you don't, it's not going to work. That's what He's teaching. And when and only we go to God and He's God's people, then He can come up with a solution for us. Many people looking around for help everywhere else but God, Christians, people in church. Now, on Sundays, they look like they're looking for God. On Thursdays, they look like they're looking for God. But the rest of their life, the rest of their time, they're not looking for God. In the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, God comes through. And he says, what hast thou done? When they had took the forbidden fruit, both of them together, he said, what hast thou done? 
He wasn't trying to figure out what they had done. He knew what they did, but what's he wanting? He's wanting them to confide in him. He, he really just said, hey, tell me everything right now. Just, just come clean with me. Confide in me. Confess to me. And, and, and he knew what was going on. And see, what he says there in verse number 26, I've declared my ways. Lord, I've told you what's wrong with me. And I'm in the dust. I've declared my ways to you. And thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes, Lord. Help me. God wants us to uh, confide in him. No permanent solution can be found to a problem if you leave out God. Got to have God. Listen to me. This is all very simple stuff. But I promise you, there are Christians, people sitting in churches all over the world that have problems that God wants to deal with and they're not letting him. Psychiatrists can't help. Why? Because they don't love you like the Lord loves you. You're his child. He knew God cared. He's more knowledgeable than the psychiatrist is also. Look at the next verse. And, and we're getting down to where I want to get to in just a second. Uh, Make me to understand the ways of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Lord, Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. Listen to me now. Lord, make me to understand it. So we can read the word of God. We can come to church. And we can know. We can have knowledge. We can know stuff. And man, we can quote. And we know the answers. We have young people sitting in churches that can give you every answer, but on the inside of that young person, they are as rebellious and turned away, but seem to be doing good. Answering them just disrespectful. Man, that's a respectful young man right there. But the problem is, is they don't understand God. They just know about him. And God's word, man, it can help us to understand. And that's what we need. That's what he was saying there. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. Help me to understand it, Lord. You see, he said, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. God's word led him to a change. God, make me to understand it. And then I'm going to talk of thy wondrous works. You see, if there is no change, if God has not changed you, and, and you are still the same, then there's a problem. If, okay, how about this? Because we have a bunch of faithful Christians in here. If God, if, if God is still not changing you, I mean, if you have hit a plateau and you are just not going any further, you're not serving the Lord, you're not doing what God wants you to do, what you do, think, and say, and go, and, and is against what the Lord's book says, and you need help. you got to turn to him and say, God, help me to understand. Help me to understand it, Lord. I need to understand it because if I can understand it, I'll be changed. God's word led him to a change. We ought to pray like that. Look at verse number 28. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. God's word would strengthen him. He's weeping. His soul is melting. He's crying. He's hurting. And we don't know what it's about. Could have been brought on by him. Could have been brought on by God. Could have been just a circumstance. We're not sure. But he's hurting and his heart is heavy and he's turning to the right person because he says, my soul melteth for heaviness. I am hurt. I am overwhelmed. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Do just say it and it be done, Lord. Or, Lord, strengthen me like your word says you can strengthen me. When we come to God, he comes to us. Verse 29. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously now this I'm just telling you I've been staring at this verse all day thinking about it I don't know
don't think he was coming to God just to escape a problem. You know, because sometimes people get it, they, they live a life and they do what they want, and then when that problem comes, uh, then they break and say, man, I'm just going to turn to the Lord. God, I need you to help me. But it's not real because as soon as God does do something and helps them, they leave again. I don't believe that's what he was doing. I believe he's saying, you know, remove from me the way of lying. Now listen, I know one thing about everybody in the room tonight. We're all liars. Now, whether we are perpetual liars, I hope not. I hope that we're not flagrant liars and just, just lie. Uh, but, but just continue to lie. I lie, but very rarely, and, and, if it, and, 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 and not about something very serious, and, and just every now and then I get caught in my, in my head and just, get, just make the wrong decision. And I decide to do it. I don't just, doesn't just slip out. I just do it. And I make a decision to not tell the truth. But obviously there was something going on with the psalmist in his life. And he said, God, remove from me the way of lying. And, you know, well, what if it means it's just the people that were lying to him? That could be what it is. But he, he was weeping. His heart was heavy. He was in the dust. I'm not, you know, you, if you lie about me, I'm probably not going to be just weeping in the dust and my heart's not going to be melting. Uh, I'll be, I won't like it and I'd be upset, but I would say, if it's a lie, I would easily say that that's absolutely not true and everybody knows it that knows me, whatever the lie would be. You make up a lie about me, I'd just say, well, that's just not true, no way. But I wouldn't get down and start weeping and, 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 and be in the dust on the ground worried. And he says, God, remove from me the way of lying. You know what I think he was saying there, Brother Ito? You know, there, there came a time in life in my Christian life when I said I'm not going to lie anymore. I don't remember that like being this big giant decision, but I, I just remember it got hard to lie. You know, when I told, I've told you a story about the furniture store, and they'd come in, and, and I always, when I sold furniture, I said, they, I said, they'd say, what about that? I said, oh, man, sit on that. I think you'll like that. That is one of our best sellers in the store, really. But I'd heard my boss say it all the time, and I, that's not, that's a lie. That's not one of our best sellers, but I could sell a couch, and it was great. I sold Brother Paul his furniture. Uh, it, but it was, good, it was good furniture. He had good stuff, and I believed it because I was saved. And, and I went, but before I got saved, I'm telling you, they'd sit on a $5 recliner, and i go, man, that is a nice recliner. You will like that. Then they call and say it broke. I said, oh, man, I hate that. That, you know, that never happened, but it does. And we go fix them all the time. But there came a point where I wasn't going to lie. lady sat on the couch. I said, man, that is one of our best selling couches. And then I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I just got saved. I lied to you. I'm not, I've never sold that couch before, but I think it's a nice couch if you'd like to get it. I, I think it's a good ma good company. They, they back their couch. It's got a lifetime warranty on the frame. I think, I think you'd really like that. I think I'm going to buy it since you were on this. I'm like, oh, good. You know, he said, remove from me the way of lying. Hey, I don't know who needs to be removed from lying in here. Uh, I, hope, I hope nobody needs to be removed. I hope we've all made a decision we're not going to lie. But the man who wrote the greatest chapter in the word of God said, remove from me the way of lying. So it isn't that uh, just bad people struggle with it. The world's lies. Everything is a lie. You turn that TV on, man. It is lie after lie after lie after lie. And nobody's upset about it. And then he says, grant me thy law graciously. You, you understand grace, right? Unmerited favor, getting it because we don't deserve it. And he says, Lord, I don't want to be a liar no more. Remove it from me and, and, and just because you're, you love me and you, you give it to me and I don't deserve it. Just give me, your, just give me the word. Give me a gift. Put your law in my heart. Help me again. I need you. And... I just, number five, I just said God's word can fix our heart. It, it was a permanent fix. Satan will make you think you can get away with it. He'll, he'll put you off in places. And listen, that's adults. 
I mean, we've known some of the best um, so-called preachers in America that have run off and lost it. Best wives of preachers. And I only say that because the leaders. Uh, you, you know, I, I, know preach, I know churches where, where you never would have suspected married men running off with men. I mean, just craziness. And, and churches you know. And it all starts with this person that wants to lie. Keep lying. See, the word will fix our heart. And we need to have it taken from us. And I just think in verse number 30, I think he's getting help. He's yeah, giving it to God. And he just kind of changes back here and says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgment have I laid before me. Lord, grant me thy law graciously, and I have chose you. You understand that it's, it's a choice. I mean, the, 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 getting saved is a choice. You choose to, to get saved. God says he wants you to be saved. He pulls in your heart and you get saved. But then total surrender has to come. And, and it has to come often. And you've got to decide. And that's what he did. Number six, he made a decision to live for God. That's a decision you've got to make every day. Am I going to live for him or am I going to live for me? Am I going to be honest or am I going to be dishonest? I, my whole life was one big lie. But when I was at the, my mom's house this past month, I, there was a man there, him and his wife, where I was friends with his son in ninth grade in Germany. And he had a good son. His name was Charles Kenny. Chuck was a good, good kid. I'd known him for seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Well, seventh grade, man, I started really getting high in Germany and drinking, and, and Chuck, Chuck didn't. But he lived on the third floor. I lived under him. We were friends, just kind of growing up there and friends. And uh, then on eighth grade, I started really getting into some crazy stuff and, 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 and doing more drugs and drinking. And, and, and I was playing football, and, and I was a star. And in and, and, and ninth grade, I was a football and star, and I was drinking and partying. And, and then uh, we moved. And I had to move. I've told you that story. Man, I was in trouble in Germany. They're going to put me in a, a kid's jail. And, and they said, if you'll leave, you never have to come back. That's fine. Well, that man on the third floor, it was just at my dad's funeral. Uh, 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 I can't remember his name. Everett Kinney. He was there. And my dad, my dad was a pretty high-ranking enlisted man. And, and, and everybody knew what I had done. It was, like, it was like open news to all the adults. And it shamed my father. Because I had his name and all that stuff, and it shamed him, and and we had to leave. And my mom, and dad stayed friends with him; they didn't really see him that much. I hadn't seen him in a long time, and and it was the first time I saw him at my my at my mom's house the other day, and and uh, and my mom had already bragged about my mom's happy. God's done something with me, and you know, if you would have known me before, but you and you would just think, man, it's amazing that God did anything, and and uh, and, and even my stories don't paint the picture of who I really was, and and uh. And so when I saw him, he said, uh, he said, Chuck's doing real good about to be a grandfather. I said, man, I, I love Chuck uh, Everett. And, 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 I, and I said, man, by the way, I, I'm sorry for all that stuff. You know, and, uh, and he goes, let me ask you a question. Is Chuck here today? And I said, no, nah, no, nah, man, Chuck, Chuck was a great kid. He didn't, he didn't do any of that with me. It was like my secret life with others. He, he didn't do none of it. And his dad was, his dad hit me, he smiled. Now, Chuck's, I'm 49, so Chuck's 49. So he's like, it's just a sigh of relief went over his dad. And I said, no, he was a good kid, man. I was the real, I was the one that was messed up. And, he, and, he, and then they came to the funeral. My mom's other friends, Larry and Marie Jewell, they knew them in, in El Paso, Texas, when I got in trouble and I was wanted by the state of Texas. And I was over every TV. And the, uh, El Paso's most wanted, literally. It said Burton Gates wanted. And it was going over every TV. And my dad was the lower United States Drug Task Force Sergeant Major of the of seven states and all militaries, uh, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, all that. He was the enlisted high guy. And and they saw when I couldn't go back to Texas, and they knew all that stuff. And and then I talked to them, and, and then they just said, and that is incredible what God did to you, Burton. Or they called me Chip. He said, Chip, that's incredible. And I said, and I just decided to serve the Lord. 
you know, I, I, I put away from me the lying mouth, and, I, and I'm against it. I, I, my, my wife's an exaggerator. She's not a liar, but she, she exaggerates sometimes, just little, little deals in there. I'm not bad-mouthing her. She was, she, I would tell her that, and, and I won't even exaggerate because I'm so afraid of being what I was. I was such a liar, and I chose the Lord. His decision was to live for the Lord. God Almighty purposed like Daniel purposed. I preached on Daniel the other night. You have to purpose to live for the Lord. We can say what we are and what we think we, what we, we really, really are. God knows. And so number, verse 31, I stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. He was determined. He, he, number, one, or number six, he had a decision to live for God. And verse 31, he was determined to stick with God. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. He decided forever, I'm staying with God. Verse 32, I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. He desired to live for the Lord. He made a decision, he was determined, and he desired. And listen, I believe that his heart got right here, and, and, and I don't know how they wrote it, what they did, or when it happened. But nine times he's going to say, quicken me in different areas in this passage. And we'll get to them when we get to them. But the, the thing is, is whether you're going through it and it's not your fault, man, God knows. And you can just say, God, I am down and out, and I need you. And man, I've, 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 yeah, my mom's watching right now, and it's fine, but I, I've heard her just profusively cry and say, God, help me. And we've both done that. God has helped us. Uh, and then if you're going through it because you decided to do it, you just didn't do right, and you're not doing right, man, God, you're God's child, and he loves you, and he, he is not going to hold a grudge. If you'll just get right, he'll get he'll take you. Draw nine to God, and he'll draw nine to you. And he's one decision away, and that's it. And I'm, I'm not, I don't think I've, I'm looking at a bunch of liars. No, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. I, I believe everybody in here has got character, literally. But I am telling you this. Whatever it is, God desires for us to make a decision to live for him to be determined to stay with him and to uh, 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 desire to live with him. And, and, and it's so important that we do that, and we have to do it. And, and, and listen, we can, we can say, well, this is just one little, well, one little one's man's a bad one. I mean, get right on that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't allow that to be. Have, have integrity to serve the Lord. And, and he just gives it. It's a different message tonight. And I wasn't expecting it really. But I feel like this is the Lord's will to preach it just like this. And I believe this is the context of it. God wants us to have a deep relationship with him. And, and if we just stay bunched up and tight and, and woe is me and I got so many problems and so many things have happened to me and I've dug in deep and I've made these mistakes or whatever it might be. And there's no, nothing you can get out of. Man, those people couldn't believe what God has done in our lives. My mom and dad, they couldn't believe my mom. My mom and dad were partiers, partiers. I mean, seriously, every Friday and Saturday night of my life, they had people in my house drinking, smoking, and playing cards and acting crazy and dancing and all kinds of stuff. And now they're, my mom's got a wall full of Bibles and verses all over the house. And, and one of the families is asking about a church. They live in North Carolina. They need to find them a church. We, we go to one, but it's kind of a little different. We want one like where we went where, where Dale's funeral was. You know, they're old-fashioned, and, and man, Christians are old-fashioned. Better believe it. Well, anyways, let's pray. Uh, maybe the Lord spoke to you tonight, and uh, I feel like the Lord had his will and way with us during the message. Father, we love you. Lord, I do pray, God, that uh, no matter what person's